may be on the horizon, unsure right now. That said, right now, several Illinois lawmakers are pleading for federal government for more funding. Nine signed this letter right here as we're expecting another surge of migrants in Chicago. One of the nine who signed this letter, and one of the people leading that charge, is Congressman Mike Quigley, representing Illinois' 5th District. That includes the north side and several western suburbs. Uh, late night in Washington, D.C., late night home, up early with us on the stream this morning. We appreciate it, Congressman. Thank you for joining us on the stream. Thank you. Good morning. Let's get right to it. How dire is this need to get more money from the federal government to care for these migrants here in Chicago? You know, it's absolutely critical. Uh, Mayor Lightfoot was correct in calling it a crisis. Uh, obviously, uh, there's some uh, anger in sending migrants up here and treating them so horribly by the Texas governor. But at that point in time, uh, for the benefit of those people who are suffering, uh, we need the best we can. So in 2022, uh, the federal government sent about $5.3 million to the city of Chicago, about one fourteenth the amount the city actually spent. Uh, recently, they, FEMA sent another $4 million, which is, again, a, a small fraction of what the cost that cities like Chicago are incurring and going to incur in the coming months. So we are talking now sub 10 million bucks from the federal government. We know Chicago has spent roughly $75 million on migrant resources. That's directly out of their coffers, our coffers. So would this extra funding solve or at least ease the issue or is it more of a Band-Aid to get through an anticipated surge? Because who knows where this thing's going, right? Right, no, and I think that's the fair question is what are we doing long term? Uh, you know, if you want the broadest picture, the longest term picture, you, you have to address the crisis in those home countries. You know, re there's justifiable reasons that people are leaving, in this case, Central America. They're leaving political and economic turmoil and they're moving toward a better life. Something, you know, my ancestors did uh, in the 19th century. So uh, it, we have to, from diplomatic means, try to stop that. Uh, to end this at some point in time. In the meantime, uh, the president's doing the right thing. Uh, he, you know, uh, I'm hoping he's going to continue to send this aid, but also he's, you know, moving to secure the border with an unprecedented level of uh, assistance there to address this issue. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of the migrants coming from Venezuela. I mean, that is not Mexico. That is South America through Central America, through other means. So these are people desperate to flee uh, from whence they came. Uh, in this letter, you're also asking the Department of Homeland Security to speed up the opening of its shelters and services programs. It's been a major concern of the last year. And also a major concern now um, because you there's just so many sides to this. You know, where do you open the shelter, so on and so forth. We see this fight now in South Shore to not open up a shelter. We're not going to go there. But what's the hold up with the ask? And what happens if we don't get the ask? Uh, the hold up with the ask is, I'll be quite frank, uh, I don't think they have the program close to being uh, set up. And that's a problem. Uh, we're... We've been asking that behind the scenes directly with them, and obviously this letter made it very, very public, but it's part of this problem. Uh, you know, the FEMA assistance is uh, one half of this. This program that has been supposed to have stood up for a long time is another. And uh, let's appreciate that, that this is a, a, the most recent crisis. So we recognize this has taken place in international history in the last several years. Syria, Afghanistan, obviously now Ukraine, uh, and, and of course Central America. So uh, the Statue of Liberty doesn't hold up a stop sign. It's, it's not convenient, it's not easy, it's expensive. It's a large part of who we are as a country, but we need to use diplomatic means to address those crises at their, at their points. We need to secure our borders. We need to pass comprehensive immigration reform, which used to be used to be a bipartisan issue. Uh, in my time in Congress, I saw bipartisan, bicameral efforts to pass comprehensive immigration reform. 
that for at the last point failed. And it is really a loss for our country. Because in the end, we, we appreciate that uh, uh, our strength is our diversity, and that comes from uh, immigration. Obviously, sometimes it's not neat and clean and easy, and this is a very difficult time. But uh, we need to address it over a long-term period of time. And I think it's important to also say that uh, President Trump, when he put this uh, system in place, basically all he did was delay it. Uh, the people who were pushed back on this uh, during the pandemic have only come back time and again. The problem came back after uh, President Trump left office. You've got to address these issues at their core and not have some facade to try to cure it. Yeah, the Statue of Liberty, of course, says, you know, welcome your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Uh, this was, of course, a Trump administration initiative, first of all. But the buck now stops with the Biden administration. Are you saying his administration has failed here? Look, uh, they're meeting several crises at once. You know, they helped lead us out of a pandemic and the mm -hmm. uh, and the ex extraordinary economic woes that come with it. I give the Biden administration great credit for a great number of things, passing legislation that we are waiting a generation to do, from infrastructure to uh, the first major bill to address climate change. Uh, he united NATO in the, in the war in Ukraine with a Russian invasion. Uh, so I, I just think they haven't gotten us where we need to get yet on aid to uh, you know, cities like Chicago and New York with these two programs to help address this crisis. So uh, they've got a lot on their hands. Uh, and I hope he can help us a little quicker than is happening now. Uh, I have met these refugees. The thing that strikes me is uh, um, it, it, it's looking into our own past, right? When my ancestors came here, what they wanted to do was find jobs. Uh, be part of the American way, the pursuit of happiness. When I talk to these young people who have come across, uh, they want to work. Uh, and that's, uh, I guess, the one of the final points the administration could get on as quickly as possible is helping them uh, achieve work permits, give them something to do. They want to do what, what we all do, and that's to work hard, pursue the American dream, provide for their families, uh, and give their children an opportunity that they didn't have. One final question for you, Congressman. We do appreciate your time this morning on a, a quick uh, layover and sleep deprivation. Uh, I have on my desk a statement from you and several of your colleagues back in September of last year. In it, it says Chicago has a long history of welcoming immigrants who have come to the United States in pursuit of a better life. We have welcomed these migrants no differently. Uh, now we're overwhelmed. It is really tipped. We've gone from sanctuary city to city in crisis because we were a sanctuary. What's the end game? All right. Look, uh, the, the end game nationally and internationally has to be to resolve these crises at their focal points. Mm -hmm. uh, secure the border. Uh, President Biden is now talking about, you know, and put in system a, a, a process in which people have to apply for asylum before they come to the border using Title VIII, not allowing them into that border. But uh, part of that is helping those. Uh, again, uh, we have welcomed through the history of this United States into Chicago. There were some times when it was ugly and it was uncomfortable and it was expensive. Uh, and there were groups that didn't always welcome everyone uh, in our somewhat troubled past here, uh, leading to Chicago we have to remember it had its issues when mm -hmm. a lot of migrants came here in the earlier century uh, chicago became the most segregated city in the united states mm -hmm. so uh, we have welcomed them we've had our issues we always overcame them we still have a lot of work to do in that regard and uh, we're seeing it play out today to an extent yeah, sometimes the greatest problems and crises lead to actual solutions congressman Mike Quigley, uh, we appreciate all your time this morning. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us, and uh, we appreciate your hard work on this issue and hope to have you again back soon on the stream. Congressman Mike Quigley, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.